Hello guys, this is the fastest revision video of fluid mechanics. So this is meant for revision purpose only. So let's start and please just like, share or whatever you want to do with the video. So let's start. So first thing we have here is that the surface tension. Okay, let's go one by one. So surface tension denoted by sigma. Okay, this is for delta P is 4 sigma by D. Okay, this is for thin film or let's say water film. Okay, delta P is equal to 8. 8 sigma by D, okay, the two times of this for bubble or some soap bubble or something, let's say soap and delta P is equal to uh, 2 sigma by D, okay, so 4A2 and this will be for jet, jet stream or something. This delta P can be if some bubble is there and let's say some, it is under water, so this pressure rho GH minus the internal pressure, so that will be delta P here, okay, in some questions it might be given that way. Okay, next thing is that what is the sigma? Sigma is force upon uh, per unit length, okay, surface tension and what we know is surface energy is equal to, because it is energy, so it is force per unit length into some area, then what we find this length, so force into length is that is energy work, okay, in this case, this is sigma into A, okay. Next thing is that the capillary, so if capillary is like this, like this is like for water, uh, it is rising, okay, so the height that it will rise, the height that will it will rise, rise to would be given by now this is water for water it is uh, delta p is equal to 4 sigma by d which is equal to rho g h and here cos theta will also come so doing all these things we finally find height because rho g d and 4 sigma cos theta okay theta is what angle if this is that so this so this is theta angle let's move on to next thing next thing is that if also let me tell you one case if there is capillary like this in between there is some space okay and the fluid is like this then if this is d2 and this is d1 then h is equal to again 4 sigma cos theta upon rho g d d2 minus d1 analysis for analysis now next thing is that the continuity equation which is very important del uh, dot so that this is the divergence of rho v okay v bar we can put it this is equal to minus del rho upon del t this is the continuity equation if it is steady state then this will be zero if it is incompressible this will come out so ultimately del dot v is zero if incompressible and steady state okay if some if some fluid is irrotational then the curve curve of that if it is irrotational would be zero and del dot v zero means solenoid solenoidal vector okay and this also means in incompressible of course because mu we have taken out next thing is the streamline equation streamline equation just remember that dx dy or maybe dz and this will be dx upon u v or w okay if let's say our v is equal to the velocity vector is u i cap plus v j cap plus w k cap or this is the z direction the y direction this is the uh, this is the x y z direction so in that way this is the streamline for the streamline to satisfy why because we need the tangent equal the tangent will tell the fluid velocity actually of that component okay so now next thing is that uh, let me take the acceleration because we have talked about uh, the streamline so acceleration let's say in x direction this would be given by d u okay u is again the same velocity the i f component or the x component x direction component okay u into del u by del x okay plus v because we have x component okay x direction so what we will take is only u okay x only u here also only u okay and this way this thing same like v so del y and uh, let put let me put it omega del u again u upon so omega so it is z okay plus there is del u by del t so this is acceleration equation Okay, just remember that if it is x, so we will only differentiate u with different directions and with time and multiply with this the velocities in different directions. Okay, so the net of the net acceleration would be the acceleration of x whole square plus acceleration of y whole square plus acceleration of z whole square. This is the thing. Now, oh, the potential function, okay, that is two things you need to just remember that this potential function of uh, one, is, one is that if this is the flow okay then we have some potential at one point and potential at point two and the stream 
stream function is like this stream is going this way so stream function this is potential how much potential like the uh, voltage that we have in electric field so in a similar way this is the same so potential is d5 by dx is u and d5 by dy is v okay this is always positive positive okay now d sin d this is stream function okay stream function d d psi by d x okay is opposite okay this thing with this opposite but this will be plus okay and d psi by d y is minus u this is the opposite just put a minus because this is stream function okay just remember that this is plus 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 and this is minus how to remember that is that uh so minus here will be because stream function if you are seeing the stream function with y that would actually be reverse of the u okay just remember this thing these four quantities and this will help you to find out the potential function of the stream function now next next thing is that the vorticity vorticity okay this is you know by sigma this is equal to del cross v and so vorticity is this and this is actually 2 omega omega is angular uh, velocity okay now the next thing is uh, next thing would be like um, navier stokes we can also talk about navier stokes in case it comes so in navier stokes this is rho into the net acceleration i will talk about this rho into net net acceleration in a particular direction into mu del square u why del square u because this whole quantity is actually delta tau so putting this mu del del u so this becomes del square Lap laplacian okay del square u minus del p by del x plus rho g x this is pressure force due to pressure force this is gravitational force this is the viscous force and this is the net acceleration so in net acceleration we can write out write this as this the acceleration du by dt plus the uh, del dot u, v dot del v or that is the same u del u by del x plus v del u by del y plus for the uh, w z also okay and in euler's equation for euler's equation we take mu is equal to zero for stokes equation we uh, assume that it is laminar so v v dot del v v dot del v in navier stokes is zero so these are the assumptions and let's move on to bernoulli equation which is very important so bernoulli is p by rho g plus z plus v square by 2g or you can write that the pressure plus rho g h rho g z okay this is potential pressure force this is the potential energy pressure energy plus rho v square by 2g or uh, not 2g here because g g will be there but g will not come here rho v square by 2 kinetic energy is constant constant let's say k okay now how to really when to know when to apply this Bernoulli so you will apply Bernoulli when you will have some case where you have some input at some one particular point let's say here point one and you need to using this thing you need to find the uh, whole fluid properties at a point two okay this Bernoulli will be acted on two points like this way okay some question might be there where you actually need three points so one and two and therefore three like this not this way like this goes further more into some bigger unit okay and you can actually then also correlate it two and three here so point wise okay this take the average velocity so it's not something within whatever it's happening it doesn't really matter because Bernoulli takes two for the point wise so that's why Bernoulli is used at those cases okay now what is head head is actually energy energy per unit weight okay so let's say head is h so energy energy is let's say p energy is force okay let's say force into distance and weight is uh, again it is force so it actually has a unit of meter head pressure head pressure head would be like p upon rho g because if we see pressure why because pressure into uh, volume this is energy and if we divide this energy with the weight weight is uh, mass into mg okay if we divide this energy by weight then volume and this will become p upon rho g so this is pressure head okay next we need to see that manometer one thing is manometer okay in manometer uh, it is used to measure light liquids the pressure difference due to light liquids or different points okay let's say there is one point here and there is a second system here we need to find out the pressure difference 
or maybe it could be also in a flow like inventory so to find the pressure difference this particular height of the uh, manometric fluid or which is mostly mercury hg is used okay this h so just this is also simple pressure balance just find out this particular this particular length okay and this particular length and if something fluid is there then these two will actually if something fluid is here let's say rho with the density rho 1 and here density rho 2 so you take up to that height whatever it is given in the question okay and this height and this way come to that point where below that the whole liquid is same like let's say below this it is only hg so we don't need to border up to there we need to just border up up to this side where this is hg so rho hg so this total pressure is equal to this pressure this is a simple balance okay and then the next thing is the momentum correction factor that is beta which is 1 upon a into v by v average v average or v mean okay to the power square da and the alpha which is kinetic energy correction factor this is v upon v average to the power cube da okay and how do we find v average so v average is found like this 1 upon a okay v into da then we know the volumetric flow rate is rho not rho here it is a into v if we put rho rho here this will be mass rate <laughs> so what is the value of this alpha and beta for laminar so alpha and beta for laminar and turbulent we have some standard values so re to remember this start with 2 and go till 1.2 okay 2 and 1.2 and here 1.33 here also 1.33 so beta value and the alpha value here this is same 2 and 1.2 is this so just make this table if you forget something 2 1.2 and this is 1.33 these are same okay now let's thing is uh, let me tell you the delta or the boundary so if there is some boundary a layer okay so they, it will have some delta that will keep on increasing and this would be calculated by for laminar it is 4.64 or you can take it 5 also so into x okay if it depends on x because it is with x it is increasing okay so this 4.64 x divided by rex okay under root of Rex, so that way we find out this to be uh, because Rex is rho v rho v x upon d, so x under root, so it is proportional to x raised to power x minus x under root, so it is x raised to power 0.5. This is for laminar. Next for laminar CD value, the drag coefficient value is 1.33 divided by under root again under root Rex REL it would be CD value 1.33. Okay, now what is laminar here? Laminar here means uh, here I mean by laminar okay not this thing uh let's say what turbulent here turbulent what to apply turbulent will be applied on this flat plate when re is greater than 5 into 10 raised to power 5 this is what i mean and for less than that we will use that okay that is not laminar flow but now the condition would be like this that the boundary flow is behaving for laminar flow in that case and here it is for re Reynolds number greater than 5 into 10 raised to power 5 this is for specifically remember this is flat plate and not a pipe okay that's why this condition is there flat plate okay don't confuse it with pipe so delta x would be here just remember 0 0.4 that was 4.64 uh, okay but there it is 0 0.4 okay just put a point into x upon uh, the un under root of fifth fifth under root that was kind of let's say 4.64 instead of that we also write 5x upon under root re here we write an under root of 5 here and 0 0.4 we write and rex okay this is a way to remember the formula. I'm just trying to make it more simple to you. Okay. You can just write, learn them directly also. No need to just. And this, we know this is to the power x upon 0 0.8 because x is there and x to the power uh, 0 0.5, oh, not 5, 1 by 5. So this would be 1 minus 1 by 5. This is x to the power whole. 1 minus 1 by 5, that is x to the power 4 by 5, that is 0 0.8 for turbulent. Similarly, for CD for turbulent that was for laminar it was 1.33 you need to do here something that 0 0.073 uh, i remember is by the if we add this we can get uh, 10 that means point here like 1 so 1.33 3 remains same and if we add this 7 and 3 we can get 1 so this will come over here this is how i remember it okay you can remember it directly 0 0.073 okay 
and Reynolds L to the power under root 5. Reynolds, this thing is same, just the above expression will change for the drag coefficient value. Typical drag coefficient value. Okay. Also, the boundary layer will separate. Okay. When will the boundary layer separate? When it will separate at du by dy is less than 0. Okay. And then what will happen? dp upon dy will be greater than 0. dp upon ds. So this condition should should satisfy for boundary layer to separate. Next thing is other three different uh one is this delta displacement okay displacement uh then this is phi momentum boundary layer and this is energy boundary layer i write it a delta star delta star star okay this is more for momentum this is displacement this is energy boundary layer thickness okay equals to equals to equals to i writing it all together it is all integral from 0 to delta okay 0 to delta and what we'll have first thing is 1 minus u by u infinity infinity means if this is the boundary layer uh, this is u infinity and this is u okay 1 minus u by u infinity into dy because this is our x this is our y we are moving it to y for the boundary layer thickness okay this is 1 minus u by u infinity now write the same thing here write the same thing here and same thing here okay now what you need to do you need to just multiply u by u infinity so multiply u by u infinity outside here and here also multiply u by u infinity but along with that multiply inside also so it will become square so these are the three important formulas okay and next is uh, let's say also like cd is actually drag coefficient is f by a rho b square upon 2 okay now static pressure now static pressure let's say this is my thing static pressure is like any point where there is some p this is static pressure then there is thermodynamic pressure the therm or this is the thermodynamic pressure only static pressure then there is some dynamic pressure to pressure that is moving this is given by rho v square by 2 in the bernoulli and there is some stagnation pressure so stagnation pressure means static pressure plus this whole thing uh, dynamic pressure this is stagnation pressure because this will lift up something here okay this will be equal to some uh, mercury or some fluid quantity that will be lifted up till here for height h so it will be equal to rho g h only okay now let's move to venturi for venturi okay just remember this one formula and this helps everywhere okay the flow rate of the two okay let me first make it not like this okay this is kind of my venturi so here i am taking at one and here as two okay with uh, d1 and this is d2 okay this is point two so flow rate at the two okay flow rate at the two now obviously venturi is like this it comes here and it goes out like this sometimes okay it depends so the flow rate at the point two okay this will be cd okay so coefficient of discharge okay not drag coefficient of discharge into a1 a2 okay right a1 a2 this is q2 is a1 a2 divided by a1 square minus a2 square okay into under root of 2g h star i will write here star let me tell you this also this 2g h is nothing but p minus p upon rho p minus p not upon rho or p1 or minus p2 upon rho because uh, let me show you this what is this h star actually so this is but the whole thing is like this here cd for venturi it is 0 0.96 to 0 0.99 okay approximately like 0 0.96 only and this x star is actually equal to rho m by rho minus 1 into x and what is this x rho m minus rho 1 so see in a venturi if this is my venturi at the two points we add a manometer okay we add a manometer and we see we measure this pressure difference between the two points using the manometer only so let's say this we again take because this is the same thing mercury so this is some mercury height this will tell us because this fluid and this fluid are same so this fluid and this part is same so this part and this part which of the same height will actually tell me the pressure difference because this part has rho m 
of mercury and this part has rho of fluid so the difference would be to find out the actual height corresponding to this value because we have the height of the mercury we need to find the height of this how much this has risen up due to the mercury pressure so equivalenting that to find this x star for this fluid because we have x that is for mercury to convert it to fluid we multiply rho m upon rho minus one and this is the height that we put there okay so in questions they will be they will give x that is the mercury height we need to convert it to that and then use it in the bernoulli uh, in the sorry in the venturi meter equation okay now if we have uh, the inverted manometer if sometimes inverted manometer is there then the equation would be like this x into 1 minus rho m by rho okay that will be x star or if it's or if it's also same formula same formula is there that u2 is c just c o will come c d o okay uh, discharge of orifice a1 a2 again same thing under root a1 square minus a2 square okay under root 2 g h star again same thing will be there but just the c d o will be 0 0.6 to 0 0.7 okay now p dot tube p dot tube is used to get local velocity local velocity at any point we find out using p dot tube and this is found out like this fluid is coming and if like let me just tell you if rho v square by 2 this is equal to rho g h so using this thing we can find out that v is under root of 2 g h that is how we find out the velocity at any point and this thing can be also written like this 2 pressure difference p minus p naught in by rho okay because uh, rho g h is equal to p minus p naught so that way we can use that also to find the velocity here one thing is here that what is c of c c of c is the uh, coefficient of contraction that is area of vena, con vena carta contractor vena contractor by the area of pipe okay like this is my pipe comes here and it contracts here so the area of vena contractor by area of pipe this is c of c coefficient of contraction next we have is that uh, cd coefficient of discharge which actually refers to volume is equal to cc coefficient of contraction which actually refers to area into the coefficient of velocity this uh, not b discharge coefficient area or contraction coefficient and c v velocity so q is a into v similarly cd is equal to cc into cb next we have here is uh, like let me give this example also let's say we have this tank here and this is uh, moving and some part coming up here so this part coming out so what will be this volume so remember volume that is in that volume that is coming here it it is the same volume that is going out and this is due to the gravity so we will use two things here first is area of this whole complete a1 this is a2 okay a1 will be very large but a1 into this change with time this is the volume in this is actually equal to the cv coefficient of velocity here with the area area here let's say small a okay area into the change so this change so this change is actually under root of 2gh which let me tell you something like this is dh by dt okay and if we see this this is the velocity itself so velocity is also meter per second so velocity into a and to get finally the time time required to empty a tank we need to integrate it and we can find this dt this is what is an example of one of the questions that comes and for momentum balance let see momentum balance uh, momentum balance is like fx at particular direction this will be d of mv upon dt this thing you need to remember and it is also pressure uh, x so this is one component and the other is due to the pressure that is px into ax okay whenever you want to balance just try to use these two and balance them out okay so let's say they are also for one point let's say some times this kind of thing is coming this is going here this is coming so try to balance this part and this part here at different angles it would come like this let me show you if something we have here this kind of thing okay so this velocity v1 is coming at q1 okay and this is going at an angle let's say at an angle like if i take this angle theta okay this is going q2 and v2 and this is coming at v3 okay 
for Q3. So one thing is clear, Q1 is equal to Q2 plus Q3. Okay, because because where will it go? The mass mass coming in will not accumulate. We are just, uh, assuming it. It will only go move out. It will not accumulate. So Q2 and Q3, adding them will give Q1. Now if we want to find this uh, momentum balance using the velocity, so it will be that the total. So so here we see like this is here v1 this is v2 and v3 and we have this theta so we will try to bring them on all over the same thing like if this is v1 we will this is also theta we will try to put v1 also in this manner so this will be v1 because the straight thing won't actually affect the flow it will just strike out and stay there what will which component of v1 will actually affect the flow is this one this will go out here v1 cos theta so now if we balance this the force this will be force is or not the force but momentum balance so rho into q if rho into q this is the mass flow rate into this is the mass uh, flow rate into v what is this this means that mass flow rate with the change in the velocity added to it so here for all the three cases it will be q, q rho okay assuming same fluid so rho q and v v1 v1 cos theta because we need to see that all the three velocities here only okay all the three velocities in one line plus this is equal to this is coming in and the net equal will be going so this is let's say my positive direction this is my negative direction so v3 will be in the negative direction so this is rho q2 into v2 minus minus because this i consider this negative direction rho q3 into v3 rho 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 we cancel and we will find uh, q1 is q2 plus q3 this we already know putting this here we can finally elim eliminate q1 so q3 upon q2 upon q3 will come as this 1 plus cos theta upon 1 minus cos theta this is the how we balance the momentum here momentum here means q into v balance just q into v rho q into v so rho into this is a v uh, like rho a v into v this is the thing that we need to balance the force actually if you see this by let's say this is this is mass this thing is mass because making thing easy is this is mass okay up, upon time okay why because q is v upon time vol uh, volumetric flow rate so into rho rho into v is mass mass upon time into velocity so mv is momentum so this is actually force balance okay we are balancing the force so that was it now next thing is the difference between the pipe so pipe and flat plate equations so i will write it like this pipe and here flat plate these equations are also uh, important these are the general equations okay so for pipe u will be 1 upon 4 mu into dp upon dx into into r square minus r square okay here also just do a small change this first is 1 upon 2 mu 2 mu okay here the velocities will be more so double of that so two times of this okay so 2 mu divided by so here also dp upon dx and just this is r square minus r square put here y square minus ty now t here is not time this is like say let my thickness be like this the total thickness is t while moving from one wall this is flat plate moving from one wall this is y okay so this is my velocity of the fluid here u by u max maximum will be we know 1 minus r square by r square very important this thing is very important and here u u max here u max by u average u max by u average is 1.5 here u max by u average is 2 okay Similarly, this is u. So to find out tau, I'm not telling the equations, but it is very easy because tau is minus mu du by dr or here for the let's say for the pipe. So use that expression over here and you will finally get this thing. Tau is minus dp upon dx. Okay. R by 2. You can learn this, or even if you don't learn this, you you just remember the value of this u, the function of u that is 1 upon 4 mu into dp upon dx r square minus r square and if you just differentiate with r this is 4 mu and mu will mu will cancel out 
this is r square so 2r okay so 2 2 will cancel out so r by 2 will come and dp by dx and minus of this will also come here because minus is here so no need to just remember this but you can find out directly just remember the u thing uh, u velocity profile for similarly for that also flat plate you can do the same thing and here now next thing is hagen poisson equation this is also very important very important because this is dp upon let's say l or let's say dl it could be also l is a 32 mu u 32 mu u by d square hagen poisson equation very important and for flat plate okay for flat plate it this is kind of the same mu u by uh, instead of d square t square t is not time here i have told you this is the whole thickness between the plates between the plates the distance t square and instead of 32 okay 32 instead of 32 3 minus 2 is 1 and 2 remains same so this will be 2 12 okay this is a way to learn this is instead of 32 we just put 12 okay this is the hagel poisson equation and in case you someone wants to find the head so for head see dp upon rho g this would be the head as dp is equal to rho g h so to find this head dp upon rho g so we, what we will do is this dp upon rho g that means dp is 32 mu mu u into that l will go up here upon d square and rho g so this is the thing that head we will get now there is some thing called kute flow okay for kute flow this is mu is equal to 1 upon uh, u is equal to the velocity profile will be 1 upon mu it's kind of the same thing that's the difference is dp upon dx y square by 2 plus c1 y plus c2 these are constants okay we can apply the boundary conditions and find out for different regimes next thing is for turbulent flow for turbulent flow we have hn is equal to f l v square by 2 g d okay this is for turbulent flow where f okay so f is f is darcy darcy is friction factor friction factor okay and this f is equal to four times of cf so f means darcy small f and cf is the friction fanning friction factor so cf let me write it capital this is darcy small f and cf is fanning fanning friction factor fanning friction factor this is four times of this and this is very important darcy wedge back equation very very important okay and this could be also used for laminar but in laminar we mostly use hagen poisson okay in laminar we use hagen poisson in turbulent we use darcy wedge back equation next thing is that uh, cf is equal to 16 by re so f is equal to four times of cf that means 4 into 16 is 64 by r okay and next thing is like uh, one more thing is uh, let me tell you this also for different flow but with that let me first tell you about the losses first so for sudden expansion let's say this is and suddenly it is expanding so the loss will be the head loss that h head loss hl let me write it v1 so at 1 and this is at 2 velocity at 2 will be less because area is increased and continuity means a1 v1 is a2 v2 so obviously if area a2 is more v2 is less so v1 minus v2 whole square okay v1 minus v2 bracket whole square into 2g this is the loss head loss minor loss from the sudden expansion for other losses we mostly have it in this way some coefficient into v square by 2g this coefficient is normally half for let's like, say some uh, there is some elbow or something okay in that way this is k value is different 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 uh, there is it also table but in that case the table will be provided in any exam okay if they are asking for that now one important thing is that let's say this is my pipe and i add another pipe here okay Q is coming flow rate so the flow rate would be same uh, until unless there is any branch so it is Q it is Q while the head head would be different this is H1 this head would be H2 okay the friction head okay now if I have something in parallel and this is coming like this uh, going like this then the flow rate will now divide let's say it divides by let's say Q1 Q1 and Q2 flow rate is dividing but the head now 
the head will be same pipes in parallel the head will be this head will be same hf but here the head will be different different hf hf2 hf1 but the flow rate will be same so in series flow rate same okay because what is entering is going out directly and in parallel the flow rate will divide but the head would be same and this is actually useful when you will apply hagen poisson uh, you will have the head is equal to p dp upon rho g is equal to we have taken a 32 mu u u i will tell you l upon d square rho g here we know this is like say our head instead of u u is q upon a okay so q upon a and here we have this u versus h this is useful when we want to find the overall system okay so q will be same in series while q will be different in uh, the parallel approach now there is some there is a topic newly introduced that is turbulent for turbulent what are the different uh, flow equations and different equations so let's write all those equations so u that is the flow of the turbulent will be the u average plus some uh, you, you can say plus some deviations like this is the u mean plus there is some deviations these deviations are u dash okay because of turbulence okay now what we find the tau the tau of turbulence is rho u dash into v dash okay so u for x v for uh, so if it is turbulent it is moving like this turbulence okay so it has x and uh, y velocity both so this we can together if we can assume let's say our we mostly assume this is dash that means the extra the deviation of the velocity this part which is also the velocity but this is the deviation from the mean velocity so u dash is let be uh, v dash are assuming this so for simplicity so this will actually con be converted to rho into this whole thing will be l into du upon dy whole square okay as you can see uh, l this unit will be l by let's say meter by meter it will cancel out so it is it is actually unit wise du like uh, velocity whole square so now the next thing here is that putting all these things where one putting this l value as 0.4y we can finally get that tau upon rho and this under root would be equal to 0.4y into du upon dy and integrating this because integrate this to find we actually want to find this u okay we actually want to find this u so integrating this we will get this kind of equation it will be u minus u max okay so u max is uh, large that means this thing is negative so u minus u max upon u average or no not u average it will be u star i will tell you about this and this is 2.5 into the ln y by r okay now y by r y is always less than r so this is also ln will be negative so this will be negative that's why this this right thing now this what is this u star u star is actually this thing that is the under root tau upon uh, rho which i told you like this was l l into du upon dy whole square not whole square this thing okay this is u star why i am telling this u star because it is u only but dimensionally this becomes in this manner that is actually 0.4 y into du upon dy okay now this is one equation this equation was important that i, I wrote here this becomes u minus u bar u average instead of maximum if we take u average okay instead of uh, u max u average then by u star it is 2.5 again 2.5 ln y by r would be again same same thing just at 3.75 okay this thing needs to be added 2.5 remember these two coefficients 2.5 and 3.75 3.75 when it is u bar and if it is not u bar or uh, u average then it is if it is u max then no need to put that now one again thing is delta dash delta dash is 11.6 mu upon u star okay this you might or might not remember doesn't affect much but this i am telling you this is one of uh, the boundary layer conditions and if if we have we need to figure out if it is smooth or rough so if you want to see that the pipe is smooth or rough well, there is this condition so this condition is similar to like a Reynolds number condition uh, we have like Reynolds number u rho v d we put rho d into u and this divided by let's say we take that mu okay so similarly in this fashion only there is this epsilon or 
this epsilon into u star we take upon mu this should be less than 4 okay now this thing is that let's say this is my pipe and there is some roughness so the average roughness this is the average reference 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 so this is that factor into epsilon this will be given in the questions okay and u star upon mu this is less than 4 and similarly if this if it is greater than 100 then we see this this deviation like the roughness is more so it is more rough because the factor is greater than 100 similarly if uh, another thing is is this epsilon only upon delta dash delta dash if this is less than 2.5 then it is more if this is greater than 6 then it is rough okay these were the main equations for this and now we have the specific speed in a centrifugal pump ns is equal to n under root q upon h uh, head uh, to the power 3 by 4 okay this is one important equation and we need to remember that the uh, ns ns means uh, this specific speed of a prototype should be equal to specific speed of a model okay for scale up okay and also this uh, because this actually means that this delta under root of h by dn here n is the speed so if we see this should be equal to under root of h by dn for model should be prototype this is also one condition and the np the uh, mixing that mixing number so power number in that mixing of a prototype should be power number that power number is p upon rho n cube d5 this should be equal for model and prototype for scale okay now there are three important graphs one is h by q one is p by q and next uh, efficiency by q for centrifugal pump and this head will decrease like this p will increase like this and eta will first increase and decrease and there is some optimum value of efficiency okay first decrease then increase then increase and decrease okay that way so now let's see uh, for centrifugal pumps questions one important thing is like this is my pump let's say this is my pump okay in most of the questions the questions are done mostly using Bernoulli Bernoulli like apply here at the inlet and apply here you can apply these two things Bernoulli just Bernoulli equation we can get the answer and let's say apply here and here you can get the uh, different quantities that is re required in the questions simple remember for every pump question there is some Bernoulli technique or and the pump power is equal to now power is equal to work upon time so work here would be p into v upon time so this v upon t is q and for the p the pressure it is rho g h so rho g h into q is power okay now next the main thing is that this newtonian fluids and all so this is straight line is newtonian fluid fluid this is pseudo plastic and uh and less than one and this is uh dilatant and greater than one what is this n i will tell you this is n equal to one and at with a certain initial intercept at the stress stress and du upon dy this is brigham plastics so let's see what is this equation for newtonian we know this is du by dy this minus sign also but this is to the power one but for non-newtonian fluids it is mu into du upon dy to the power n now to change it into this form what we can do is mu du upon dy to the power n minus 1 into du upon dy okay to the power 1 and then we can do this like this this whole quantity can be written as mu dash okay this is my apparent viscosity okay so tau is the mu dash into du upon dy so in some questions if some stress is given and shear stress is shared uh, this uh, not shear stress stress is given and maybe the apparent uh, viscosity is given then you can find out du upon dy as well how you you can use first consider that tau is some apparent viscosity okay apparent viscosity mu dash into du upon dy to the power one in this way putting this or if something this is given this is given then find the tau and tau is actually 
the actual mu into du upon dy to the power n. And in this manner, if you find out if this is given or uh, this is given, uh, in this is given, so let's say tau and this are given, you found out this, then using this, and because tau was given, and using this, this was given, you can find out mu and n if two cases are given to you. So this type of questions would be really helpful and I hope you like this video and please like, share and subscribe.